On the edge of Tegucigalpa lies the residential community of Las Uvas, the home to many upper middle class residents such as doctors and lawyers. Their two-story homes almost seem out of place in this third world country, but on the backside of the community, out of sight and nearly out of mind from the rest of the world, is a group of about 20 adobe homes. It is here where families eke out an existence. Children run barefoot, clothes are washed in a nearby stream, food is cooked over adobe ovens. Gabriel Escoto, an only child, grew up in this forgotten side of Las Uvas. His parents were poor and struggled to survive, often leaving Gabriel alone in the house as they went off to work. His father was a security guard and his mother cleaned houses. Gabriel would have to walk an hour to and from school each day. He started to become very rebellious, demanding money he thought he deserved from his poor parents for new clothes and shoes. When his mother denied him the money, he would yell and curse, throwing rocks at her and making her cry. At the age of 10, he tried his first cigarette and was soon a chain smoker. At the age of 11, he got his first job working as a helper on a dump truck. He quit school at the age of 12 after finishing sixth grade. He started drinking and going to parties, looking for something that would soothe the hurt and pain in his heart. Gabriel's cousin, Luis, had begun attending the church started by Eric Coons in Las Uvas and invited Gabriel to go with him. Gabriel began to go to the services and listen to the sermons. He longed for a better life. God began to convict his heart and talk to him about his spiritual need. Gabriel would often lie on his bed listening to Christian radio. The music and the sermons touched his heart. A desire began to grow in his heart to sing and preach for God and to live for a greater purpose. In the summer of 2016, Gabriel came to the altar to pray during one of the services at the Las Uvas Church. He repented of his sins, crying out to God for mercy and forgiveness. Jesus changed his life that day. He stopped smoking and drinking and began to faithfully attend church. His passion was to serve the Lord. He began discipleship classes, learning all that he could about how to serve the Lord. Upon completing his discipleship, he was baptized. Gabriel feels called to be an evangelist. He loves to visit the sick, witness to anyone who will listen, and to preach the gospel. His dream is to go to Bible school and train to be an effective minister. The future is bright for Gabriel. God has great plans for this young man's life. In Matthew 28, 19, what we call the Great Commission, Jesus commanded us to go and teach all nations. We love to focus on the go in this verse and pay little attention to what Jesus told us to do, to teach. In verse 20, Jesus tells us what to teach, all the things he had commanded. That teaching process is what we call discipleship. It is way more than just making converts. It is teaching a new worldview. Taking a new convert under your wing and changing the lenses of their worldview is a long and tedious job. It takes patience and tenacity. Questions often arise that can be difficult to answer. It requires prayer and study to be prepared, but it is definitely a job that is very rewarding. Discipleship is key for building a strong foundation for new believers. 
We have several new converts who are being discipled. Each one has their unique story and their particular set of struggles they are dealing with. Usually on Sunday afternoons after lunch, our discipleship class meets for about an hour. Our first level discipleship class has 12 lessons. We deal with basic doctrine such as the definition of sin and salvation and how to live a pleasing life before God. There's always time for questions and discussion. They are usually given reading assignments during the week and they come back each Sunday with comments and questions. It has been exciting to hear their testimonies each week about how they have grown in their faith and how they are putting the lessons into practice, learning to talk differently, thinking differently, and even act and dress differently. Upon their completion of the discipleship, they are then baptized and are given privileges to begin serving in the church. Baptism is taken very seriously by the believers. It is a public testimony that they have given their hearts and lives to Christ and that they seek to obey His commands. Members are not allowed to serve in the church if they have not been baptized. Sometimes discipleship is done outside of a church context on a one-on-one -on -one basis, such as taking new converts, witnessing door to door, and showing them how to share the gospel with their neighbors. It may be by giving driving lessons to someone like Felix Florentino, who wants to serve in any capacity possible. Felix has thrived in discipleship. He studies hard and reads all that he can. His deep desire is to be able to go to a Bible college and study God's Word full time so he can be more effective in reaching others. When I think about discipleship, the story of the Ethiopian eunuch usually comes to mind. Here was a man who had the scriptures and was reading the gospel but he did not have understanding. The Holy Spirit led Philip to where he was seated and Philip asked the eunuch if he understood what he was reading. The eunuch replied, how can I except somebody should guide me? That's when Philip began to explain to him that Isaiah was speaking of Christ who was our sacrifice for sin. Discipleship is coming alongside new believers and explaining to them the meaning of God's Word and how we are to live Christ's commands. Along with discipleship comes the need to train church leaders. The people must feel responsible for the well-being of the church and also feel ownership for the ministry. As a team, our hope is to train pastors, leaders, and teachers who are equipped to carry on the work, even in our absence. For the past several years, Hannah has been training some of our teens on how to teach Sunday school, allowing them to participate in Sunday school classes and showing them how to prepare lessons. Now that Wes and I are here, we plan to continue to intensify the Sunday school and children's ministry leadership training. We have held seminars to challenge and inspire churches to be more passionate and creative in reaching the children. We plan on meeting with those interested in children's ministry, helping them to develop themes, create visuals, and make more dynamic classes. The idea is to develop a children's ministry theme library. Our Central American churches will be able to inter-exchange develop themes and have all the lessons and decorations that they will need. Working with children is our passion. Developing strong children's ministries and effective teachers to reach the next generation is our vision. An effective way to indoctrinate believers is by giving them opportunities to teach others. The Mormons, who are known for sending their young people to foreign fields for two-year terms, do so not so much to convert people to Mormonism, but rather to further indoctrinate their own missionaries. It's a method that seems very effective. Cell groups or home Bible studies have provided an opportunity for us to give more hands-on training to our church leaders. The groups meet weekly in a designated home. One of our church leaders has been appointed as a type of pastor for each group. This allows for our young leaders to learn how to prepare sermons, lead services, and oversee small groups. Our hope is we will be able to start more cell groups in new communities that will grow into fully established churches.
education in Honduras is a great need and is also an effective tool for discipleship. In places like Las Uvas, the majority of the children do not go to school due to the long distance to the nearest public school and the high cost of transportation. As these children grow into their teens and are converted to Christ, their illiteracy becomes a hindrance to their effectiveness as a born-again Christian. Daniel is one of those young people who long to be used of God and feels a call to be a missionary. However, Daniel doesn't know how to read and write, but he does the best he can. When he has the opportunity to preach, he often has someone read the Bible text for him and then he will share an extemporaneous sermon. Daniel could do so much more if only he knew how to read and write. Daniel is just one of many of the teens and adults who are handicapped by their lack of education. As a ministry team, we feel a burden to address this need. We would love to start an elementary school here in Las Uvas. I am excited to help by starting a literacy program here in Las Uvas. This program that we would like to use is a Bible-based program, and at the end of the program, they should be able to read at a third or fourth grade level. Once they have gone through this program, they should be able to start studying their Bibles and to be able to prepare sermons. I am excited to see this community transformed by education and the power of God's Word. What are you and your church doing to disciple? It was a Sunday morning, I had just finished my sermon, and I stood scanning the crowd in a North American church where I had been invited to speak. God's presence was there. I spotted a visitor toward the back who had all the outward trappings of a woman of the world. She had been invited to church that morning by a friend. As the music softly played and I asked if anybody wanted to come forward, she made her way to the altar where she wept and prayed for salvation. We rejoiced that a new name was written down in glory. The lady testified, so thankful the burden of guilt and sin was gone. She was a new disciple, a follower of Jesus. But as I left the service that morning, questions swirled in the back of my mind. Would anybody take the time to disciple this new convert? Would she be taught how to please God? Would someone explain the teachings of Jesus? Or would she be left on her own to figure things out? Only time would tell. Is there someone in your church who has recently begun to follow Christ? Could you have Bible studies together? Could you start a new believers class in your church? You may not feel adequate for the job, but as you step out of your comfort zone and come alongside a new convert, you will be amazed at how God uses you and further strengthens you in your faith. Accept the mission as a church to help lead new Christians into a deeper walk with the Lord, to take the step of baptism, and then to integrate into church ministries. If we truly want to fulfill the Great Commission, discipleship must be a priority.